In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic fluid simulation with just three objects. We'll use something that will affect the fluid, something that will emit some fluid flow, and something that will contain the domain of the fluid. There are many more things you can do with fluid simulations in Blender, but this will get you started with just the basics so that you can start experimenting with fluids. It can be a bit confusing, so the first thing we need to do is have a scene. So here in Blender, I have a simple coffee cup model, a couple lights, and then an infinite backdrop. I'm going to select the coffee cup here, and then I'm going to make a new box around the coffee cup. This will be the domain of the fluid simulation in Blender. We need to tell Blender where the simulation should take place. To add a new object in Blender, you press Shift A. So I'm going to add a cube. Then I'll press G on my keyboard to move up. I'll type Z and then 1. Now the cube is on the ground plane, similar to where the cup is. I need to make this a little larger so that the simulation can splash around. Anything outside the cube will not be simulated. Anything inside the cube will. So I'll tab into edit mode by pressing the tab key. Then I'll press 3 to select face mode in Blender. I'll press G then Z to move this up. That should probably be enough height to have some fluid pouring into this cup. But now I need to have a little bit of width. So I'll press A to select everything, then scale by pressing S, then press Shift Z. This will lock it to scale in the XY plane. Now we don't want to make this too big because the larger it is, the more it has to calculate. So I'm just going to enclose the coffee cup itself. I could probably get away with right here, but we'll get a little bit more. I'm going to label this cube up here in the scene collection as domain. So now I have a domain for my simulation. I'm going to hide the domain just for a second. Now I need something that will emit the fluid flow. So I'm going to press Shift A in Blender to get a UV sphere. And I'm going to make sure that the segments are 16 rather than the default 32. Then I'm going to select the sphere, tab into edit mode, press G then Z to move it up. And then I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. I'll look at the top by clicking Z. And then what I want to do is just move it over to the side. It could be in the middle, but it's going to look a little bit more interesting from the side. So I'll press G, then Shift Z to move in the XY plane. And how about right here? So now I have everything that I need for my fluid simulation. I'm going to tab back to object mode. And then I'll click Shade Smooth on this object. And now I'm ready to start the simulation. So I'm going to show the domain again. The first thing to do is select the domain. Then click the Physics tab. It's on the lower right, and it looks like a planet orbiting a planet. Then I'll select Fluid. Blender asks us what type of fluid we want to have, and in this case, it's a domain because it's the large cube. There are a couple more settings we need to set in the fluid simulation in Blender. The first is the domain type. So we need to select Liquid, and then we can come down lower and we need to select mesh. This will generate a mesh that can have materials. And then under cache, instead of replay, we need to select all. So this means we'll have to bake everything in the simulation to see it in Blender, but these are good settings to start with. Next, we need to select the cup, and we need to click fluid. And this type, it's going to be an effector. We'll ignore these settings for now, but we'll probably have to add some surface thickness to help the cup work in the simulation. We'll also go ahead and select this background and select fluid and make it an effector. Since the plane is just one layer thick, we're going to select is planar. This will help Blender calculate the fluid simulation. Then finally, we need to select the sphere. It's right here, and we'll select fluid, and this time the type will be flow. We want the flow to be liquid. We also need to select the flow behavior. If you select geometry, it'll just be a single sphere drop down. Let's go ahead and leave it as is as geometry to see what that means. So I'm going to click on the domain, then I'll scroll down to the bottom, and I'm going to click Bake All. Then Blender will bake all of the fluid simulations. 
Now, if I play from the beginning, you'll see that the fluid bounces down. And this is what I was talking about, about the fluid bouncing out of the cup. There's two reasons this is happening. One reason is that the fluid is low resolution. We'll talk about the resolution of the fluid in just a moment. The other is that the cup may need a bit more surface thickness. So I'm gonna type 0.5. Then I'm gonna go ahead and back to the domain and I'm gonna click free all. So anytime you bake a simulation, you have to free it and then bake it again. So now let's see if that single geometry drop stays within the cup. So as you can see, now the liquid falls and stays in the cup. But we can have a much more interesting liquid falling. So we can see that this is pretty chunky. So I'll move right here. I'll right click shade smooth. That helps a little bit. But what we really wanna do is go to the top of the simulation and change its resolution. To be able to get any of these options grayed out, you have to click free all. Then I can go up to the top and let's just double it to 64. Then I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'll click bake all again. So now Blender will bake it, but it's going to bake the fluid simulation at double resolution. So this will make the liquid seem more realistic as it falls into the cup. So now when I press play, we'll see that it falls into the cup and it looks a little bit more realistic. You can see we're starting to get some splashes and things like that. But this is a pretty sad cup of coffee or orange juice or milk or whatever we want it to be. So why don't we go ahead and have it have some more flow. So to do that, we need to click on the sphere. This is the flow. And we need to change the flow behavior from geometry to inflow. There's a couple choices here. Outflow is a way of having things leave the simulation so you don't get too many particles, but we're just gonna leave it at inflow. And then we'll go ahead back to the domain. And this time we're going to free everything. And then once more, we'll bake all. And we've left everything at the 64 resolution. So this will have some detail. You probably wanna get 128 or 256 or even 512 for a good physics simulation but that'll take a bit longer to bake. So you wanna work in low resolution with fluid simulations to kind of get a general idea. And then once you have all your settings and animations set, then you can bake it longer. So as you can see, now we're starting to get some more flow. So I'm gonna pour this in and you can see that it's filling up uh, the cup of coffee. But as we notice here, it's kind of overflowing. So while that's a fun effect, it kind of doesn't work with the size of the domain. What I want to do is scroll back and see where is that cup of coffee finishing. So it looks like this is probably around frame 138. So I'll click on the sphere. And here where it says use flow, I'll click a keyframe. And then I'll move forward a couple frames and I'll uncheck use flow. And I'll click a keyframe. This will turn off the flow. So I'll just move this right there. So now I can go back to the domain and then I can free all and then bake all. Now it's going to bake the simulation, but it's also going to turn off the flow of the liquid so we don't have an overflowing cup, which is really convenient. You can turn the flows on and off, start and stop. The keyframing possibilities are nearly limitless in Blender. So now I'll go back to frame zero and press play. So now the cup is filling up and then we'll see the flow stop and then we have all of our simulation. You can see that this is a pretty wavy coffee cup. You can change that after you free all by changing the flip ratio. If you hover here, it says a value of one will make a very splashy animation, and if you lower that value, it'll become less splashy. But let's go ahead and add some materials to this. So here I'm going to click on this object, and I'll add a new material, and then let's go ahead and make it like some, an orange material. So we'll make it sort of like orange and then maybe just a little bit, a little bit darker. And then we'll bring down the roughness and then we'll increase the transmission. And so now we have some sort of orange tea-like substance. And then there's a couple things since I'm using Eevee. And since I'm using Eevee, there's a couple more things. We need to click screen space refractions and subsurface translucence down at the bottom here. Then in the actual render settings, 
we can go ahead and do screen space refractions and refraction. So now we can see that Eevee is approximating some like lemonade or lemon juice. To make this look even better, we can add a better HDRI image. So I can click on my world tab here, then click color. And what I want to do is click an environment texture, and then I can open one. And then I can go ahead and add in an HDRI image. And so if I click on the render tab, you'll notice that it has some of those reflections in here. So now I have a nice render. And for the last one, I can go ahead and hide the sphere from the render. And then I'll get a nice, nice view. And then when I bake it the last time, I want to add a bit more resolution. So I'll go ahead and click on the domain. Then I'll come down to the physics tab. And I'll free all. And this time I'm going to go ahead and add the bake up to 128. So now this will have a resolution of 128 when I bake it. It'll take just a little bit longer. And then we can export an animation and have fun pouring our lemonade or honey into our coffee cup. Hopefully you can make lots of fluid simulations. There's many more things to talk about, including smoke and fire that we'll cover in future videos. But this will get you started making fluid simulations in Blender. Happy 3D modeling.